Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Aoife Fitzpatrick, and I'm a student recruitment coordinator here in Carlow College. You're all very welcome to our open evening on preparing for college as a mature student. This evening, I am joined by Karen Delaney, one of our admission officers, Anne Marie Peters, and Dr. Lisa Fortune from our student support services. They will cover the following in tonight's session. So, making your decision key dates to remember, fees, financial support, entry requirements, transitioning to third level, student support, services and college readiness. We are also joined by Karen and Will, two of our students who will be answering some, uh, some questions about studying as a mature student. If you have any questions for any of our panellists this evening, you can pop them in the Q&A box below and I'll put them to the panel at the end of the session. So now I'll hand you over to Karen Delaney for admissions, who is going to speak to you about making your decision. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Mature Student Information Open Evening. As Aoife said, my name is Karen. Um, I'm the admissions officer at Carlo College St. Patrick's. I'm pleased to be speaking to you tonight um, with regards to your decision to go to third level and um, this is a big step for, for anyone going into third level but I understand um, that it's it's a nearly a bigger step for a mature learner in the sense that there's life going on and there's things to consider, uh, really consider um, while making this decision so I hope I can help you this evening. Um, so just I'm going to jump right in and um, obviously when you're making a decision about going to third level education, the most important thing is, is the course you're doing, the program. Um, and it's, it's very um, helpful to have research, to have spoken, to even be here tonight um, and, and pick up some tips and, um, you know, jot some things down that hopefully it will help you along this journey um, through CAO and, and into college. So um, what I personally, obviously, that you're making a decision to, to do a program that you're really interested in. This is three to four years of your life. Um, so, you know, have, have a, a specific goal in mind or, or perhaps not, but definitely have the interest um, in the program you want to do. I think um, being fair to mature learners, you're coming, either coming back to education or maybe not have been at third level before. So um, sometimes I feel like, you know, the interest is, is there maybe rather than the younger learner who's just out of school and, you know, maybe just kind of pressurized to do it. So um, the second thing I want to cover here is research. And this is really important. Um, what I mean by research is obviously the program, but the institution as well, make good, um, decisions of what program to do based on, on information and knowledge. And this is available to you. To, um, what I would say is start looking at, um, you know, your finance, um, you know, the content of the program, um, not just sign me up for X, Y, and Z with, with no research done. So now is the time um, to, to be no taken on the exact program, the, ex the exact institution you want to go to. I'm here and I'm hoping it's Carlo College St. Patrick's and one of our programs um, and hopefully we can help you. But just to ensure that that research is done before you make a decision and put it on your CAO form. Career guidance, if you have access to career guidance, um, use those facilities. They have great nuggets of information and um, they'll also direct you in, in the right place of where to find information and um, assist you. So if you have access, definitely use those facilities. I would also encourage anyone making an application to, to a college or through the CEO to talk to the actual lecturers and the students. They're, they're the lecturers are obviously the ones that teach the program. They know their content more than more than anyone. So get a get an insight into what the nitty gritty of the program entails. And students, if you're fortunate enough to know current learners, brilliant, talk to them and um, you know ask those questions that you you know. Well, what is it really like? Um, and and they will tell you. Um, again investigate finally just investigate and make good sound decisions so um i just before anything to, to pick the right course and a, a good informed decision that's the most important thing um if i'll get you to move to the next slide
Okay, so I'm going to cover um, some of the programs, well, all of the programs that we have to offer um, at Carlow College St. Patrick's. And on this, I don't want, obviously, um, mature learners, you're not worried about entry points here. The assessment is a li little bit different for mature learners, and I'll go through that in a few minutes. But I want to, you'll see on this slide all the programs that we have available. So we've an ordinary, um, uh, I'm going to start with the level seven. Uh, so we have an ordinary BA in Arts and Humanities, and then we have a BA in Applied Social Studies and Professional Social Care. They're level seven programs. Both of those are three years. And if you've made an application to CAO, you'll see that there's both level seven and level eight course choices. Again, that's you know important that you've done the research and you're picking the correct level um, for your application. We'll go through the uh, level eights now. So we have a BA Honours in Arts and Humanities, BA Honours in Social, Political and Community Studies. Um, we have a BA in English and History and three new programmes for us this year. BA Arts in Philosophy, Politics and Sociology, BA Arts in Psychology and BA in Media, English and Culture. So three new programs there open for application through the CAO. Um, I just want to mention on this, you'll see the bottom left there, the BA Art Honours and Applied Social Studies. We operate on a, an add-on year basis for our honours degree. So you will not be applying for a level eight through the CAO. You will apply through um, the level seven program first and then it's an add-on year. Um, there's three um, MAs uh, well, there's two MAs and a, and a postgraduate diploma then at postgraduate level, which, you know, after going through a, um, a degree course might be of interest um, down the line. Go to the next slide now, Aoife. So I'm just going to cover off. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure if you've applied to CEO yet or you're thinking about it. And I'm not sure, you know, who I'm, I'm really speaking to here. But all our applications for third level um, and, and for all our programs will go through the CAO, okay? So um, on this slide of some really important dates, obviously the first one there is the 1st of February, which is coming up next week. That's the normal application closing date, okay? Um, and I, I just want to mention, I probably should have put it up here, but it's a fairly simple website to remember, cao.ie, that's the website for application, okay? So the 1st of February, if you're thinking about applying to any, any of our programs, that's the date that you need to have your application in by, okay? Um, you can amend your course choices right up until the 5th of February. Um, uh, uh, or sorry, the 5th of February is when it opens, and you can do that right up until the 1st of March. Um, there is a late application, I know I mentioned the 1st of February, there's a late application period um, whereby you can apply. The only thing I'll say is that CEO will just charge you a little bit extra for your application there. So if you're, if you're keen and you've made that decision, I would recommend having it in before the 1st of February. But the late application will open on the 4th of March and close on the 1st of May. Um, there's a facility for change of mind. Um, through, so you've added your programs and um, you, you decide maybe in April that, oh, look, no, this isn't for me. I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a different course. And that facility is there for all applicants and um, up, uh, closes on the 1st of July. OK, so round offers and when will you hear from us? So if you apply as a mature student, um, the deadline for application, the 1st of February or the 1st of May, you'll hear from us after those dates. And mature learners, this is the important one, early July, it's normally the first week in July is when um, mature learners receive their offers. OK, um, and then later rounds, obviously, deferrals, further matures, FEs um, in early August and, and late August. Uh, uh, leave insert applicants then okay so really early August or early July is is the one for, for mature that you're hoping you'll receive an offer okay move on to the next um so just just some notes um here um so 
Um, a mature student assessment, I've mentioned that the um, requirements for a mature learner are a little bit different than or leave insert. I said that in a previous slide that there's no points requirement for a student, a mature student. So if you make your application, we will then contact you. There'll be a supplementary um, application form that we'll ask you to complete and then we will call you for an interview. Pre-COVID, this was in-house, on-site. Um, uh, we worked in, in team interviews. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID, we ended up doing telephone interviews for the last couple of years. Um, again, undecided now at the moment what, what's planned for the 20, the, this year, but um, we'll assess you on the basis of interview, be it on-site or via telephone. Again, I've mentioned this before, the change of mind um, facility there. These are, these are some no important um, recommendations. Just that, you know, before this deadline passes that you're, you're fully sure and confident of the list of programs that you've put down. Again, I want to talk about preference list. Even when you're applying through CAO, you'll have a one to 10, a level seven and a level eight course choice listing. It's really important that they're in genuine order of preference. So the one you really want to do is number one, okay? Um, uh, and again, after each, um, we will process after each um, round offer and you will receive correspondence straight away from the college, okay? So just a few notes there. Next slide. Again, I'm gonna, I, I've said this, but um, this is probably the most important bit of um, advice I can give you um, when you're completing your CAO application form to just really ensure that they're there in genuine order of preference. Um, each year, um, I'll get phone calls after an offer round and someone will say to me, you know, Karen, I really actually really wanted to do social care, but I put a different program down. Can you offer me a place? And unfortunately, I can't because the CEO um, operates on a on a preference list, basically. So if you get offered your first choice, that's the program, you know, um, that you're offered. You will not get subsequent offers. So again, just, you know, list them in, in genuine order of preference on your form and you will be fine. Um, next slide, Eva. Um, so again, I, I, I kind of briefly went through what will happen. So you've applied through CEO. We'll then, once the deadline's passed, we'll send you an application form. The assessment is in person. It's, I said that it's either face to face or telephone interview, and you will be notified within a week of those interviews. And again, I've mentioned this that you receive your offer in round A, which is always processed in early July. Okay, so I'm just going to touch on this. This will be for some um, of the viewers tonight and um, not for others, but I, I briefly mentioned this. If you're an FE applicant as in a level five or six, um, for all our level eight programs, the minimum requirement there is two, four, three point score. And for um, our level seven, it's one, seven, eight, okay? Uh, a full level five award or level six and a program linked to the college degree, um, which you're seeking entry to, and they can be found on our website under FE Learners. We do have quotas in place and we do operate through round A, but our quotas are generous. Um, uh, and like I said, all offers process in, in round zero for FEs. Um, so I just want to mention, that I'm sure there's some viewers here this evening, just in relation to our psychology, degree um, and some entry requirements here. So um, for, um, uh, so sorry, uh, mathematics is not a requirement for um, the bar of psychology, see below. So English, um, sorry, English or another language satisfies the language requirement for all our degree courses. However, if English isn't your first language, we will require proof of English proficiency proficiency okay so I just want to mention that again that psychology is the only program that we have a maths requirement for and mathematics is program specific to um, the, the BA in psychology and we require a minimum 06 in mathematics there okay so for mature or FE learners that are not doing a leave insert and that wouldn't have a minimum of 06 
they were required to pr provide evidence of such competency via a standardized maths computation test, such as the Wyatt tree or similar. Um, again, we're in discussions, not a date set, but we will provide that on site for it any mature or FE learner that will require that test, okay? We'll move to the next slide. Just, um, I want to move on to finance now and just talk briefly about this because this is a consideration for it. Um, mature applicants. So I want you to know that the registration fee is 3,000 euro per year, okay? This is a major factor and it, it requires a lot of, you know, consideration for mature learners because of other financial commitments and family and X, Y, and Z. So, you know, this is a lot of money, big consideration. Inform yourself now, there's a really good website there. It's called studentfinance.ie and I would highly recommend going on to that website. Um, at Carlo College, we don't specifically have course specific costs as in books, printing, laptop. When you register as a student, um, we have a library and, and later on uh, our student supports will, will talk through that. But a lot of the materials, um, access to computers, that's all available on site. But all the same, um, consider the finances of, of commuting um, you know, and going to third level education. Make that consideration now um, before you find yourself sitting in college and you know, overburdened with this stuff. Again, Lisa Fortune later will probably speak about students with disability and eligible funding there. Great, thank you. So um, again, I've mentioned the student finance, student registration fee is three thousand euro. Um, there are grants available. Again, this is the research that um, you know it can take place now. Um, so SUSI, S U S I, has a student grant scheme in Ireland, um, and they will, if eligible, cover um, registration fee or part of that. There's an online application um, system for student grants, and that can be www.suzy.ie, um, and that can be accessed when it opens in April for application. But you can visit Suzy now for lots of information. There's an eligibility um, you know, tracker on there that you can put in your details and see if you'll be eligible for a grant. So I'd highly recommend going doing that, you know, now or before application as well. Um, again, I, I've said, I've kind of mentioned this in the previous um, slide, but there's an eligibility reckoner on the website um, that you can go in. Um, I recommend doing that. Um, Tips for applicants um, applying to SUSE, make sure your, your application is in as early as possible. I think, you know, SUSE being fair, this is progressed and um, they are as quick as possible processing grants, but it's, it's always good to have your application in early. Make sure the information you supply in relation to date birth, PPSN and personal information is correct as it would avoid, it was, it would advise, avoid delays in processing. And you can use the application tracker online to check the progression of your application. That's really handy. Um, you know, come uh, registration time in September, even if you're still pending or you're waiting on grant, to have that knowledge before you go on to the program is, is always handy. So that's a nice, um, you know, facility that Susie have. And move on, Aoife. Um, so I, look, that concludes the admi admissions part of the presentation. Um, I'm going to hand you over to Karen Wills and Will Rainsford now, who are two students with the college. And like I said earlier, they're going to give you the real insight. So thanks for listening and I'll be available for questions at the end. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that informative presentation, Karen. Now we're going to speak to Will and, Car Will and Karen, as Karen said, they're two students and they're going to speak about their experience of studying here in Carlo College. So just a quick reminder again, if you have any questions for our two students, Karen and Will, or any of our panellists this evening, you can pop them in the Q&A box and we'll get to them at the end of the session. So Karen, I might just start with you first, if that's okay. Sure. Why did you choose to study at Carlo College? Um, for a couple of reasons. Um, the first was that I'd, 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 I'd 
known a couple of people who went there and uh you know I, i've always had positive feedback um uh, and then as well as that it's right on my doorstep so it was a, it was an obvious choice for me but it was more so the feedback i was getting from the former students um and they were mature students as well um and they had found you know um their their passion there and they, their experience was so positive that i was really excited to 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 you know uh, and, I, and i still feel sort of privileged even to be to be going to carlo college brilliant thank you and will yourself why did you decide to study at carlo college it was a <clears throat> sorry it was similar enough reasons to be honest i was close to the college i live originally i was born in a tie and stuff like that so it was nearby but also the course type in itself because i found the arts and humanities which is the one i'm doing it had five main subjects throughout and throughout the i'm doing the four-year version of it that you can pick and choose the modules and have a really unique and you know individual course path that is very was very interesting to me in particular so i found that the the options that were available in the college seemed to be really great so it's kind of like this for me anyway it seemed like this kind of hidden gem down in carlo yeah. because it's so small even if you talk to some people from carlo they're almost like which college it's like this the small college you know that kind of way everyone just kind of dismisses it but it's of i think it's of great importance and i think the course is brilliant yeah exactly studying at a small college can be great and we really are a tight-knit community here in carlo college and karen just how did you find the mature student interview it was really relaxing actually and a lot of fun you know it wasn't what i was expecting at all i was really nervous going in but by the time i came out i was you know really uh sort of looking forward to you know really hoping i got i got in and 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 excited about going to college yeah so it's nothing to worry about and will did you find it easy to meet other mature students in the college um kind of now honestly because of the whole um coronavirus situation it became difficult in general that it was just yeah. you know lockdown was going on everyone was wearing masks it was hard to see who was who but um i found it i found in general it's it's fine obviously being online is a bit of a difficulty so that there is yeah. a lack but since um this year has started where we're actually in college i found it great to be able to talk with people in person you know that kind of way because no matter what as great as technology is there is no uh, reality between two people and when you meet people in person I found this to be far more far more interesting and really beneficial I think as a cohesive class you know that kind of a way yeah, so I definitely. don't think I've had any interest I, I, I haven't had any issues I find yeah. it's great and Karen would you agree with Will yeah I've had uh, I mean you know i our class is very close you know we're you know we're we're always in contact with each other um via email or, or teams or um but it's great to be on campus i you know i have to echo what, what will said there it's 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 a, it's a lot better when you're in person um but uh, when when things went online we still managed you know it was good yeah i find it it's even easier with face to face like when you were from working from at home if you had a question you'd have to email someone or ring someone but at least now that when you're back on campus to be able to ask somebody and help each other out. Uh, Will, did you feel there's adequate sports available for mature students in Carlow College? Yeah, I think so. I'm kind of in a funny situation personally because I joined the student union and stuff like that. So I'm somewhat more aware, I suppose, just by exposure of other supports and such for mature students. But I find that maybe it's just my personal experience from my classes that the mature students are adamant enough that they kind of pursue what it is that they want to find you know that kind of way so a couple of times in the start of this semester someone would say something to me that I wasn't even aware of even though I'm supposed to be the mature student officer but yeah. I have found these the moment you just need to a bit of direction kind of and then you can find out so much you know that kind of way like even doing yeah. a google search of mature student Ireland uh, will turn up a bunch of different things whether it be from other colleges or stuff like that but it's important to see what other people are doing, you know, so you have a precedent to move forward that kind of way. So I've found it quite well, uh, quite good, actually. Brilliant. Yeah, there is plenty of resources out there. As mm. you said, it's just about looking for them and asking if you need any help. 
Karen, um, I'll come to you again. How have you found juggling, say, your home life with your college life? Well, it's been a challenge um, and I always knew it would be a challenge. But I think when I decided to go to college, this was my biggest concern. And when I started college, I kind of approached it like I said to myself, well, if I was going to work every day, this is what I'd have to do. I'd have to try to 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 to, to manage this. So if I, if you treat your college course like a job, you know, um, I think you'll sort of if you have that mindset, I think you'll tr you, the management of it will be a lot easier. It, it all depends on how you approach it. Now, there are everybody has issues managing their their, you know, their time. But it is something that's doable and you will get around it. Yeah, exactly. And Will, do you think there is a good balance between mature students and leaving cert students in the college? Yeah, I think so anyway. Like my year in particular, some of our classes could have people from who are literally just out of school. Mm -hmm. And so myself, I'm in my 30s. So there's like a, a decade of a difference between the pair of us and stuff like that. But I found it that because it's such small groups of class and stuff, it is very easy to be cohesive with each other and communicate with each other. And uh, obviously since going back in person, it's so nice to be able to just meet someone randomly in a hallway and to be able to have a conversation about the thing that we just learned, you know, like an hour yeah. ago or whatever. So that's really important. But even before that, with everything online, I found that there was great interaction. And I think everyone's kind of in the same boat. By the time you reach college, that uh, a lot of the younger people coming straight from leaving start realized that all oh, that kind of school stuff of cliques and groups and stuff like that kind of dissolves. Everyone in college is kind of in the same boat. So no one's yeah. going to be really, everyone's rowing together. Exactly. Keep with the metaphor. <laughs> and would, Karen, would you agree with Will? Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, there's absolutely sort of no pretentiousness or, you know, everybody sort of gets along. It's, it's actually a lovely uh, type community I mean you get to know everybody in the college from the you know the the canteen staff to the security to to everybody you know so everybody sort of knows each other on a first name basis um so yeah and you know the lecturers are so good they're they're always sort of so supportive and if you have any questions you know that they don't mind they want you to ask questions they you know they encourage you to, to challenge them and to ask questions um you're not expected to know everything and you know so it's 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 a great learning environment actually yeah i agree i think a small college has major advantages the fact that as you said both said that everyone gets to know everyone everyone's there to help and the lectures as well, as you said, Karen, they're there to just, they just want you to succeed. So they'll help you while you're in college. And then also when you graduate, they're always there to help you afterwards as well. So uh, Will, I'll come back to you. What advice would you give other mature students who are considering about applying to study in Carlo College? Well, for, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Oh, sorry. No, I thought I pressed the wrong button there for a second. Um, would you mind asking the question again there? Sorry, I don't Yeah, know. it was just what advice would you give other students, other mature students who are thinking of coming to study at Carlo College? Oh, oh um, I'd definitely say go on to the, the main Carlo College website because the amount of information that's on the website alone, you wouldn't even be aware of. The amount of people in my class who I would say to, it's like, oh, did you read this thing that's connected to the course? And they're like, no, no, never heard of that. Because there is, up, there is like even in the course I'm doing the Arts and Humanities, there are sections that talk about the potentials for the future of what you could do. So that's your typical idea of a career can be, you know, vastly changed by just reading what other people have gone through and stuff like that. So I've found it quite good, but maybe I'm just a bit neurotic with my wanting to figure out everything and read everything. But like I keep saying to people, it's, it's all readily available there. All you have to do is go on to the main website and from there, the options are all available. Like um, Karen talking earlier about, um, all the finance needs and stuff like that, they're all on available. All the contacts of all the staff is all available there. So I think it's I think it's very good actually. Yeah. And thanks, Will. And Karen, what advice would you give other mature students who are thinking of applying? To do it, absolutely. You know, um, 
you know, I, I remember how daunting it was, uh, you know, thinking about going to college, thinking, oh, my God, this is for someone younger. It's not for me. I've, you know, I've sort of had raised four children. So, you know, and they were sort of nearly adults at this stage. And, you know, that's kind of what I've been doing. So I was like, oh, no, you know, but um, I got over that. And, um, you know, but I do remember how daunting it was. And I think yeah. once you take the first step, you won't be sorry. Um, it's, it's a huge opportunity. And I'm so glad I did it because it actually saved me. I don't know what I would have done through lockdown <laughs> if I didn't have college. So it, it kept my it kept my mind going and it kept me yeah. focused. And yeah, so it's it's but it's it's so worth it. Um there's no limit to what you can achieve. Um and you're always learning. And I love learning. <laughs> so yeah, it's great. So yeah, it really it. is just about taking that first step. That's yeah, the hardest, as you said. Yeah. And brilliant. And then just the final thing, I won't keep you too much longer. Will, what do you think would you say is the best thing about studying as a mature student? So coming back to study as a mature student. Um, I personally would say the advantage, I know it sounds so ridiculous and younger people be given out, but having those years of experience coming into college is such a different perspective, you know, that kind of way. Yeah. I find that a few members in my class who are just out of school, and they don't really know what they're doing. You know, that kind of way, I th I've, a couple of them have kind of said, oh, my parents have got to pick a course. So I randomly picked a dozen courses and this one happened to be the one. And now that they're in the course, they're having a great time or whatever. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's as a mature student, having that advantage of going through life and all that stuff, I find anyway for myself that I'm so thankful to be able to be in this situation. You know, all, all things considered, to be able to study and pursue and to advance yourself and especially with these courses the majority of the courses in Carroll College are somewhat socially related or somewhat involved in the community you know I mean it's not an abstract course even though at times the modules may go into a bit of abstraction but it is very involved and I find that it's very very good for myself as a mature student to be able to I don't know whether you're thinking about contributing back to society in some way or another it seems like these courses are opening up pathways that would reveal career choices that you would never have considered earlier on in your life say so that's what yeah. I think is very good about it brilliant thank you and Karen what would yeah, you I say think the as best a mature thing? student I, I would echo that um, and as a mature student I think you have a lot to bring to the table you don't realize it um, you know until you're actually in there and you know you're you're debating and 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 discussing and uh, learning sort of uh, how to sort of critically approach things um you know but you you don't realize how much uh, experience you have to bring to the table and how valued that is actually you know so it's it's a uh, it, it's a great experience and it's one i highly recommend so yeah if you're thinking about going to college do it definitely yeah, exactly just do it well, Brian, thanks so much, Karen and Will, for joining us and for sharing your experience of studying with us in Carlo College. Um, as I said before, if you do have any questions for Will and Karen, you can pop them into the Q&A box. They'll hopefully stick around with us for a little bit longer and we can put, to the, put them to them at the end of the presentation. So thanks a million, guys. Now I'm going to move on and I'm going to introduce you to Anne-Marie Peters and Dr. Lisa Fortune. Who's go, who are from the student services in Carlo College. And they're going to speak to you about the services that are on offer here. Thanks, Eva. Can everybody hear me? Yes? Yep. Great. OK, so hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Lisa, and I'm the head of student services and learner supports. And myself and my colleague, Anne-Marie, who's our learner information and retention officer, just want to talk to you a little bit about um, the student support services that are available here at Carlow College. Well, I suppose first and foremost, I mean, you've heard the guys there talking about their experiences. I mean, the most important thing, I suppose, and the main reason why people come to Carlow College is because of their academic programme. And it's really important that you are successful in your academic program, but success can be different or can look different for everyone. So once you start that program and once you begin to move through those stages from one to three or one to four, you really begin a student journey. And within that student journey, it's one of 
personal growth and also one of skills development. And you heard Will say there that, you know, opportunities are opening up to him and ideas that he never would have thought possible. And it's all part of, I suppose, that transitioning into college and then through all the different stages. And on that student journey, our student services are here to support you um, to basically support you along the way and to enable you to achieve that success at the end. And with that in mind, the Carlo College itself then takes a whole of institution approach to supporting student set, uh, success. So that means that we, you know, we really take an interest in our students, we really take an interest in terms of what they're doing as they move from first year to fourth year, and we are there really to assist with any academic, personal, social challenges that students might have as they're undertaking a programme of study. So, as I've mentioned, the transitions through and out of college are really important because, you know, as you move through, you will be faced with some challenges, but they can also be opportunities. So whether it's learning how to write academically, whether it's learning how to use a referencing system, um, using a piece of software, IT, using our Office 365 um, system, you know, writing right up to writing your dissertation or literature review, whether it's the 500 piece word um, count that you have to write on your first assignment, right up to your 10,000 word count for your dissertation. We really are here to support you in that success. And that's really what our student support services are all about. So Aoife, if I can have another slide, please. Great, thanks. So our student support services there, um, we just have some of them, as you can see. We have an academic resource office, we have a counselling service, we have chaplaincy, a health service, a career service, and also our Lyro advisory service. So we have both pastoral and also some academic support services. And just to stress that we really see those, these student support services as being more developmental. We don't see them as being compensatory at all. Sometimes student support services, um, the perception can be that you only use the student support services if you're in trouble, if something's gone wrong for you, you know, if things just, you know, aren't the way they should be. And nothing could be further from the truth. As I've said, we're there to kind of really wrap around our students in terms of, of their transition through each of the stages. So as I've said, the help, the support, um, and sometimes the challenges that we can, uh, you know, kind of set students, it's really all about trying to help them to, to be the best they can and to succeed as, as much as they can in, in, their, their, in their academic program. All members of our um, student services um, team are members of their respective professional bodies. We also, we operate both online and in person. So you can have an online um, appointment or you can have an in-person appointment. And we all have resources and also um, other materials available on our Moodle, which is our VLE, our virtual learning environment. So I'll just go through some of them now for you. So the next slide, please, Aoife. Okay, so first up then is our academic resource office. Now our academic resource office is um, essentially our disability and our learning development service. And there's, I suppose it's made up of two things. So first of all, if I can talk about the learning development service first. Well, the first three points there, you'll see that we have a writing development tutor. We also offer some learning development workshops and classes. And we also have um, a first year academic and digital skills program that's a module that all first years must take, regardless of what program uh, you're taking. So with that in mind, it's really about helping students to settle in and to begin to develop, you know, um, academically and to think academically. And we've heard, you know, our students there talking about, you know, critical skills and being able to contribute in class and so on. And again, it's all part of supporting you develop those type of skills. So really, um, this is about our writing development tutor who will have, you know, one-to-one -one appointments to assist with sorting out an essay title or maybe proofreading or assisting somebody with their, you know, maybe a, a, a critique of, of, of something that they have to submit. Also, um, we have some workshops that are run, and again, they're available online or in person. And these can be anything from understanding your learning style to developing a study or a time management schedule, you know, uh, referencing, uh, exam strategies, essay writing, all that type of thing. Again, um, our academic and digital skills program, as I've said, it runs across all of our first year programs and it's a mandatory program. So everyone takes that it's a five credit program and our first years have just finished that the final exams and so on were there at Christmas. 
Um, secondly, then we have our disability service and our disability service really is um, a very kind of broad ranging service. So it deals with students that may have disabilities, learning differences um, and or long term health conditions. So again, the disability service is really about supporting students who may need just some reasonable accommodations in terms of exam accommodations or maybe, you know, in terms of equipment or software and so on, and also in terms of assistive technology. And I'll just talk a little bit more about that now. So Aoife, if you can just move on, please. That's great. OK, so one of the things to note is that you don't have to be eligible for DARE, the Disability Access Route to Education, to get supports um, in third level if you are a student with a disability. So in terms of, um, I suppose, what we offer, what we offer really is, again, just supports for students that may have anything from maybe ADHD, could be neurological conditions, uh, dyslexia, dyspraxia, um, hearing impaired, vision impaired, and so on. We have quite a lot of students in our college um, who do require some sort of reasonable accommodations, and that's what the Academic Resource Office, the Disability Service, that's why we exist. Um, again, what we would say is that early disclosure is very much encouraged. You can disclose at any time during your time at Carroll College. So again, sometimes we have students who might wait until fourth year before they, they wish to disclose a disability. And usually it's because they need to avail of some sort of additional support. But while that's perfectly OK, um, really, we would encourage you to disclose as early as possible because it allows us then to move forward with our supports and to plan supports with you that will be with you for your entire college career. Now, how we do this is through a needs assessment and the needs assessment is something that is conducted. It's a very informal one to one uh, chat really that you will have with um, a needs assessor. Uh, it happens as soon as you decide to disclose a disability. And really what it's about, it's agreeing the supports that you might need to support you as you go forward. And the needs assessment is the source document that we use to arrange all supports. So it's really important that you have documentation. So for any student who's applying to the CAO, and if you wish to tick the disability box, um, again, you know, it's really important that you have the documentation to back that up. The documentation will be required um, should you um, become a student at Carlow College. Again, there's a couple of different ways of looking at supports. We have college supports that are available to everyone, but we also have what is known as Fund for Students with Disabilities, the FSD. And you can get further information on this online at studentfinance.ie. But really what the Fund for Students with Disabilities is all about is that it's for students who qualify, who satisfy certain eligibility criteria. And it allows us, the college, to buy certain types of equipment that may help you with the particular course that you're doing and we will match the type of supports to the type of course that you're doing so that could range anything from a grammarly subscription to help with you know grammar and spelling it could be around uh, recording or note-taking devices it could be providing speech to text software text text to speech software either um alternative forms maybe of provision for different um maybe books and so on and with exams it could be accommodations such as additional time or use of a laptop you subscribe or a reader access um, to these things. Again, you know, um, there's also some other things that, that, that are available, such as personal assistance. And sometimes there can be assistance for students that may um, have transport uh, requirements. But again, what we would say is that if you're a student with a disability, please do disclose early. We are here to help and please do get in contact with us. We'd be only too happy to talk you through uh, where you're at, answer any of your questions and also to plan with you for the different types of technologies that we have and also the different types of supports that we have in, um, to assist you the whole way through. Again, one of our supports would be a learning support service. And this consists of a number of, of tutors who are available, again, to help with um, the academic elements um, of your program. And um, again, the assignments that you might have to do um, and, and help generally with your assessments. OK, next slide there, please. OK, so if I can move on then just to talk about student counselling service. So in the college here, we have a free and a professional confidential service that's available to all of our registered students and we have two counsellors uh, Bernie and Martina and they are available um, on a full-time basis uh, to provide supports to our students. Often what can happen is that uh, when students come to college they may find that you know 
there's certain roadblocks that get in the way. You know, it may be that there's some conflict going on, you know, maybe at home and um, there could be relationship issues, bereavement, you know, stress and anxiety. It could simply be just adjusting to demands of third level. And again, Martina and Bernie are there to assist with that. Again, you might be taking a, a program that might have a placement and the placement could be raising challenges or issues for you. And again, Martina and Bernie provide a safe space in which you can chat through those particular difficulties. Um, as well as that, they also offer some online supports. They have a Be Well hour, as well as some other kind of counselling sessions that they offer and all are advertised within the college. And they also have a walk and talk kind of service available where they, they take students on walks around the grounds, everybody's free to join. And it really is just a chance to catch up, you know, to have a chat about what's going on in people's lives in a very kind of informal way. Along with this, uh, we also have an out of hours tech support service and our students can text CCSP, so Carroll College St. Patrick's to 50808. And again, that provides a text based service for students out of hours when our counselling service is not available. OK, next slide, please. Now moving on to our chaplaincy. So again, um, we do have a chaplaincy in the college. Um, just to say that the, our chaplain, Lean, takes a very holistic approach to student well-being. So chaplaincy is not about religion, so to speak. It's really about just providing a space for students where they can congregate, where they can meet. Um, Lean is very much into you know, hospitality and community, providing opportunities for students to meet and have conversation or to receive guidance maybe on where the best place might be for them to go to get uh, support or advice uh, within the, the college. Again, uh, Lean provides pastoral support service, particularly in times of distress um, and bereavement. He also has um, a kind of a private space that's available to students. Um, students tend to use it as a quiet space, just if they need to get away from it all, uh, for reflection or for meditation and so on. And Lean runs some, class, some, some classes on those. But also we have a private space for some of our students that might have sensory issues um, as a space for them to kind of just recalibrate um, you know, for as long as they want. Liam also looks after what we have um, a little a small fund called the Chaplaincy Assist and the Chaplaincy Assist Fund is really a modest financial aid for students who may be experiencing unexpected difficulties and we have quite a number of students who avail of that during, during the year. Um, finally then we, he also deals with some peer support and mentoring programs so again if students are interested in getting involved in peer support and um, you know we heard Karen there talk about bringing students bringing mature students bringing um, something to the table and certainly with regards to peer support and mentoring and that that is very very true. Um, next please Aoife. Okay, then the health service well our health service is run by our it's a nurse led service and it's run by our nurse Maura. And it's free on campus service. Um, again, Maura's uh, role really is just to provide immediate medical care. And um, she can help with any condition that requires special attention or monitoring. And her um, office is supported by an off campus subsidized GP service. Okay, and that's in close proximity to the college. So, literally around the corner from the college. And the college pays half the cost for any GP visit for any non-medical card or GP card holders. Um, so again, it's free to anybody that has a medical card, but the college does subsidize it for those that don't. Maura, again, runs some health promotion workshops and campaigns. She's heavily involved in the active consent workshops online, again, in conjunction with NUIG. She also runs vaccination clinics for various different, for placements and so on, for various different uh, vaccinations. And as I've mentioned, you'll see there on the slides that they're all part of, um, they're all members of their professional organizations as well. Okay. And then finally, then we have our career service and our career service is, uh, Eleanor is our careers officer. And I mentioned before about, you know, the transition when you come into college and as you move your way through stage one, two, three, and maybe on to, to stage four, depending on your program. And as you move through each one of those stages, you are kind of met with challenges because you're academically, you're, you need to kind of step up, but also, you know, some of the challenges and thoughts around what might I do with my career? You know, where do I think I'm going? What type of postgraduate pathway might I like to embark on? Or what type of employment do, do I see myself in? So what Eleanor offers really is a professional kind of uh, service that gives support, advice and guidance and quite a lot of information resources around what you can do with your degree. So she really focuses in from first year right through to graduation and for two years post graduation. So once you graduate from Carlo College for up to two years after your graduation, you can still get in contact 
with our career service in terms of you know your postgraduate options or in terms of your employment options so the career service really focuses on building employability and that starts from day one and year one in with our inductions when we have quite a lot of, of um, input from our student services team. She also focuses very much on career decision making, but also on kind of opportunity awareness. So the whole idea of jobs clubs and so on, CV building. You know, Eleanor is always saying that it's never ever, you know, too early to start planning for where you think you're going to go in your career. And as I've said, again, she will do online one to one appointments, but also she teaches on some of the, um, the programs as well in terms of the employability modules on um, some of the arts and humanities, English and history programs as well, and also social care. OK, so that's just a flavour, really, of just some of our student supports that are available. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to take questions about them at the end if anybody has any. So for now, I'd just like to hand over to our learner information and retention officer, Anne-Marie. Hi everyone, um, my name is Anne-Marie and I'm the Learner Information and Retention Officer here at Carlo College St. Patrick's. Um, as you've already heard there from my colleague Lisa and from Karen and Vinshin, there is a wealth of supports available here um, for you at Carlo College at St. Patrick's. The most important thing to remember is you've received a lot of information tonight about coming to college, finances and supports and obviously you know you, you may forget some of these supports or who to ask. And I suppose my role is I am the first point of contact to assist you with any queries that you have. Um, my role also is to assist you in the transition into first year, in particular attention to your first year because it's new um, to you, especially as a mature student to be returning to education. Um, you may have some queries, you can come to me. Um, the Learner Information Office is, is an easy and central place for you to have ask you know, any questions. Um, I'm based on the first floor here in the college and it's an open door policy so you can pop into me at any time, you can ring me, we can meet on team so we're, we're totally accessible to you um, as you transition into first year. Um, we're not just here for you in first year obviously we, we, we're also here for you as you transition and progress on through your degree from second to fourth year um, so we'll get to know each other uh, well throughout your degree. Um, we work uh, with students on a wide variety of concerns including both personal and academic concerns. Um, you'll find sometimes, um, as Karen mentioned, you know, these mature students may have families that they're dealing with, they're coming back to education, um, they can have lots going on. And sometimes this can be overwhelming at times. And it's sometimes people will come to my office as Lyro and just kind of, you know, explain where they're at. And I can obviously assist them in any way I can. And we can talk through a plan and see how we can help them. Um, Lisa, if you want to move on to the next slide there. Um, as, so as I mentioned, the information and um, advice service is here to support students across all the stages of their degree. Um, sometimes um, personal things can get in the way of college. Um, sometimes things don't always go to plan. And students can, can have some obstacles there. And it sometimes can impact on their college. Um, it may be affecting their ability to engage in their college, you know, uh, program. If that is the case, um, I am also your, the first point of contact for you. Um, so we would have students that may come with an academic concern. So they may, um, you know, be falling behind on their assessments. Um, they may find the workload a bit too much. Um, if they come to me, then I can um, provide support and assistance in, you know, making helpful, helpful referrals. Um, to other departments. So for example, if it's an academic concern, I can refer on to the academic um, advisor so that you're supported there. If it's an emotional or practical concern, or sorry, emotional or personal concern, um, we may refer you on to our counseling service, um, if it's a health concern, our nurse. So basically I can be the first point of call if you're unsure, you know, of where you need to, who you need to speak to. Sometimes students don't need to be referred on to, to another support. They can just sometimes just having a conversation with me alone is enough and they, they feel that you know they're happy to get something off their chest and then um, they you know they're they're happy with that so um, most people sometimes look at me as like I'm like a signpost in the college I'm the go-to person um, so if you if you have a question like you know where's the bus station or where where's the library or if they're not familiar with the college they will come to me especially in their first year and I will guide them to to the area that they're looking for. Um, Lisa, do you want to move on to the next slide? 
So just to talk you through some of the other supports briefly that we have here at the college. So we have library and information literacy. So the library holds all the materials that you need for your program. Um, they do regular tours at, and workshops throughout the year. They also have a how-to section on our, your program Moodle page. So you'll be able to see how to download eBooks um, and how to use the, the library um, heritage system. And uh, if you're looking to download an online journal, um, they will assist you with all of that. As I said, as a first year, you'll meet them at um, our induction and orientation. Um, at induction and orientation, you'll meet your program director, you'll meet with myself, you'll meet your academic advisor, and you will receive your timetable and your program handbook on that day of induction. Um, so if any of you are late starters or missed your induction, um, you can also avail of a one-to-one -one induction with myself. Um, so again, if you have any questions, um, you know, on your first few days of induction, you can come to me and we can, we can certainly go through anything, any concerns that you have. Uh, we have an academic advisor. So an, the academic advisor is a member of the academic staff and they're the first point of contact for any course-related queries. Um, we also have the Car Carlo College Students Union and we, we met with Will yes, or there earlier on, he's the student union officer. We also have class reps. So if you can have any questions or wish to raise any concerns with your class reps, they sit on our program board so they can bring any queries to, to the program board if, if you have any. Um, and Moodle then, moving on to Moodle, it's our virtual learning environment. So Moodle is where you will be accessing your program page. Um, again, your timetable, your academic calendar, program book will be on that. All your coursework will be on that. You'll be submitting any of your assignments and assessments through Turnitin link on the Moodle page. Um, we will be going through all of this. This is just to kind of give you an overview of the kind of um, supports that were different supports that we have here. Uh, we also have the international office. So Dr. Ari Sir is our international officer. So if you're a student, um, not a non-EA student, you'll be dealing with um, Eric. And also um, some of our students avail of study abroad. So we have a, a sister university in the US and some of our students go there for a semester. Um, I'm not really sure what's happening in relation to COVID-19, but prior to COVID-19, we have students who have availed of that. Um, we also have our IT and system support. So um, they will help you troubleshoot any issues you have um, when you come to college first, like your email, Moodle, any kind of IT queries. Uh, we, we do get a lot of um, IT queries from students and they hold workshops again throughout the year. And also we can arrange you know, some one-to-one -one if you need some extra support. Um, also, if you're deciding on maybe buying some equipment for college, like a laptop, um, Cairo College will supply you with the Office 365. So that comes free to all registered students. So there's no need to buy an Office 365 package. Um, if you are buying a laptop, just to bear in mind that, especially if you're in the psychology course, there is a program there called SPSS. And I think there's a minimum um, memory, I think it's eight gigabytes of RAM. Um, so just remember that if you are, um, you know, buying a laptop, if you have any questions like that, you can contact me or the IT department. Um, if you want to just move on to the next slide then, Mr. P. I think the next slide is in relation to college readiness. So Lisa's going to come in on this and then it's back to me. Yeah, just as, um, as uh, Karen mentioned earlier, you know, really being organized and informed is, is, is quite important. And we talk about being college ready all the time. And I think when, you know, and I'm sure I'm really agree with me, can we see mature students coming to speak to us or within our services more often than not you know students can feel that they're you know a little bit I suppose a little bit of imposter syndrome they think you know why am I here I'm not good enough you know I've made a really bad decision or you know I just I thought this was a good idea and now I'm being overwhelmed by maybe what I feel I have to do and what we would always say really is you know believe in your own ability I mean really believe in your own ability you know you really have to have a glass half full kind of mentality um, insofar as yes you mightn't be able to reference but that's yet you mightn't be able to you know write an academic essay yet 
you know, so it's it's there. You've got four years or three years in your degree program. And that's really what it is when we talk about that transitioning through first year right the way to fourth year. It's really about developing those skills as you move along. We don't expect you to come kind of, you know, um, all beds and whistles, everything, knowing everything on the first day in college. But we do expect you to um, participate, I suppose, in, in your own development as you move through college and to kind of take on the challenges as they come. So believing in yourself really is, is the first step. And to understand that, you know, transitioning to, co to college, to higher education, it really is a process. You know, as I've said, we don't expect you to be, you know, to be fully aware of absolutely everything. But you do have to get organized. And, you know, one of the things we have there is organization, organization, organization. We can't say it enough because it's so important that you realize that the CAO application is really only the start of it. And, you know, after that, there are many more registrations or many more bits of information that you have to find out. I mean, you've heard there Will saying earlier, Karen saying earlier that, you know, there's stuff going on in the college that, you know, you have to keep abreast of and that you have to keep yourself kind of informed of as well. So there, the, it does bring with it, I suppose, these increased responsibilities, you know, so it may be that, you know, you need to register with our nurse. It may be that you need to register as a student that, that requires exam accommodations, or you might need to sign up to classes or enroll in different different modules and so on, you know, and there really is a kind of an onus on that kind of personal responsibility to do that. We're here to help. But um, but again, you know, the, the idea is that you need to kind of get it as organized as you can. And um, in terms of, you know, just in general, your increased responsibilities, you know, things about you know attendance and you know accurate information and so on i mean you know in this information age things can change you know so quickly so it's important that you keep kind of the college updated with with what's happening in terms of your own details and so on and that you do bring you know any documentation that's needed so if you need to find you know that um maybe a dyslexia assessment that you've had that that you're not sure where it is you know now's the time to start looking for it if you need to start you know getting yourself organized in terms of um you know, as I've said, uh, you know, kind of your own practical skills, maybe in terms of academically, do you need to think about, you know, maybe uh, familiarization with a laptop? Do you need to, are, are you familiar with IT at all? Do you need some support in that area? And again, you know, if you want to get in contact with us, we're more than happy to point you in the direction of where you can get some of those supports, uh, particularly ones that are free and online. Um, in terms of understanding, I suppose, college, when you come here, and Marie mentioned it earlier, um, you will kick off with an induction. And we do have a very comprehensive induction for all of our students. And it's all linked to our website. And we have an induction hub and a student hub there that gets you all of the information that you need. And um, so it's really important that you get into the habit of, you know, kind of, I suppose, organizing yourself okay and making sure that you know that you, you you constantly check into where the information portal is and that you're keeping abreast of, of what's happening um also in terms of just some of the i suppose transitionary points that students might talk to us about would be i suppose the understanding of the individual lecture and then a tutorial timetable you know just because you're on the same program as your friend doesn't necessarily mean that you have exactly the same timetable and that can be due to the course choice it can be due to the module choice um, in some instances but more often than not it's due to the tutorial timetable where you know you might be in a different tutorial group maybe to your friend and that can have an impact on when you're supposed to be in college and so on so it's really important that you know just understanding that your step into college is very much an individual step and um, about keeping abreast of all of the information that you need um, around getting started. Um, independent study is really important that you understand that what happens in the, in the classroom um, sometimes, you know, you think you're coming to college and it's going to give you all the answers, but more often than not, it poses more questions, you know, so you, you leave scratching your head thinking, oh, I never thought about that. Um, not sure about it. An awful lot of processing of information happens outside of class. It happens outside of class, maybe in your tutorials or in the cup of tea in the canteen or whatever, you know, having the chats with your friends about, you know, what people were saying in class and what it might mean and trying to link it and connect it. And that linking and connecting is so important. But it is that independent study that 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 is important and to know that outside of your timetabled hours that you know it is expected that you will do some independent study and that that's all part of you know getting organized and keeping on top of things and so on asking for help is hugely important please don't ever feel that you that any question you might have is is too stupid you know or silly that we wouldn't want to hear it 
um, you know, the one thing that we would hate to see is a student who wouldn't ask for help and who might then feel that, you know, maybe they're overwhelmed. They feel that the course maybe is not for them. They, they maybe are concerned about a submission, not understanding how to use Turnitin. Things that can be solved very, very simply. And I think Anne-Marie would agree with me on that point that more often than not, some of the queries we have from students, you know, once we chat them through, there's always a really, really straightforward answer. And usually it's one that, um, you know, that, that really works, you know, and is very helpful. Um, and then finally, I suppose, to be open to the new opportunities for academic, personal and skills development. I mean, coming to college, it's a huge challenge. It's a huge decision. And once you're here, you know, it's not just about the academics, you know, there's also a wealth of other experiences that you can get involved in that will really help you in terms of your own personal and skills development. And just to say that within the college here, every program that you do are linked to our graduate attributes that we have. And I won't go through them here now today, but, you know, again, understanding that, you know, academics is one aspect of it, but the total development of the person, you know, is, is, is also part of what you get when you start um, embarking on a degree. Okay. That's it. And the next one. Thanks, Ralinka. Okay, so I'm just going to go through a few things that are good to know about Carla College. So we are located in the heart of Carla town. Um, we're for anyone that's thinking of commuting by bus or rail, we are very close proximity. I think it's a 10 minute walk from the bus and rail stations here. For anyone that's thinking of considering renting, um, we're 37 percent cheaper to rent in Carlow than some of the larger towns like Dublin or Cork, larger cities. Um, so there, we have a positive lecture to student ratio. You'll find that when you come to Carlow College, you'll know absolutely everybody by first name um, from the um, catering staff to the reception to, to everybody knows everybody here, um, which is really comforting. Um, we have a welcoming and positive atmosphere and 95% of our graduates would recommend um, Carlo College. Um, we have some um, comments here from some of our students from th this in year's cohort um, of first years. And um, I just, I won't read them all, but I will read a few here for you. Um, I, one of our mature students said that I feel like I belong already. The lectures have been welcoming and friendly and made the transition into higher education for me as a mature student supportive. I look forward to the next four years here. Um, one of our other students said, easier than I imagined, total support, which was a surprise to me as I was new to third level. So these are all very positive um, feedback from our first years and um, first mature, year mature students. Um, Lisa, or, um, sorry, Aoife, if you wouldn't mind going on to the next slide. Um, the next thing I'm gonna to touch on now is accommodation. Um, I'm just going to touch on this briefly. Um, as I said, some of you as mature students may be commuting. Um, you may have your own transport, but I will just touch on accommodation um, also. Um, so the most popular way to find accommodation will be through websites, which I've listed some below, which it also may be found through our local, our local auctioneers and in local newspapers. So um, the Nationalist is the local newspaper here in Carlow. And some of our local auctioneers are Ray Mara Property Services, and Carlo Property Management, which I've linked here. Um, our Carlo College Students Union and IT Carlo Students Union have a Facebook group page and the Students Union there, and they advertise um, accommodation that's available um, as well throughout the year, and it's linked here in this presentation. And then some of just the familiar um, websites like um, hatchstudents.ie um, hatch, um, and Grabagat and College Crib. So if you want to check that out, as I, as I said, some of you may be commuting, some of you may be coming by train or bus, or some of you may actually already live in Carla. But if you have any questions um, or if you, if, you know, if you want to make your renting experience a positive one, you could check out the Threshold website and Citizens Information website um, that is, are linked here in this presentation. Um, that's basically it from me, but before we go to any of the questions and answers, I just would like to say um, best of luck with your mature student assessments, and we look forward to meeting you um, in September, and don't forget if you have any questions or we've given you too much information tonight or you, would, you know, we forgot to ask anything, please do reach out. Our email addresses are at the end here, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. 
Brilliant. Thanks, Amelia, Lisa and Anne-Marie for that fantastic presentation outlining the services and sports on offer within the college. So now we've come to our Q&A section of the presentation. So again, if you do have any questions, just pop them in the Q&A box. So we do have some in here. So Karen Delaney, I might start with you here. I have a question that says, I can't afford to stop working to, working to study full time. Even if I did get a grant, is there a part-time option to get a degree at Carlo College? Sorry, Karen. You're muted. Apologies, thanks. <laughs> it's the joys of Zoom when you forget, or Teams when you forget to unmute yourself. But yeah, I've typed an answer in there to um, the Q and A uh, section there. But it might be handy to vocalise this because it might help others. Um, yeah, many of our part-time learners, we do have part-time options firstly, but many of our part-time learners are, are working, and the part-time options on all our degree courses are. Um, are available and um, look, it's all about access, access to education. And um, I'd encourage anyone that's working and not really ready to commit to full-time, maybe to come in and do some part-time modules with us. Um, there's several di different options here. You can take up to six modules per year. If, if you're, you feel like you can't take that route, you can take less options. But yeah, I've provided, um, a link to our website which will have a full detail of fees and um, what's available um, on the part-time options for the degree courses in the um, chat there in the Q&A section there but yeah there is part-time available um, and if you have any more questions on that I'm happy to take emails at admissioncc at carlocollege.ie. Brilliant thanks a million Carrie. And Anne-Marie, I might come to you, uh, just another question here. Are there scholarships that mature students can apply for to cover their fees? Hi, um, we do have, there is a scholarship, um, it's, it's a separate entity to ourselves, but it is the, e, uh, the university scholarship, and that is in particular for mature students. Um, so I'll, I, I'll put the link up um, in the chat, I think it's university.eu. Um, so basically, if you you will receive if this is again if the applications are open online on their website, but you would you will receive on top of your grant um, if you're eligible five thousand euro for a single applicant and I think seven thousand euro if you have dependents. Um, so and you also have to be applying for a bachelor's degree. So it it not level six. It has to be level seven or level eight. Again, if you want to find out more information on that. Um, you just log on to their website, university.eu. Um, okay. Brilliant. Thanks, Amelia and Anne Marie. Okay. okay. Um, I know we're a little bit pushed for time, but Lisa, I have a question here you might be able to answer. If I want to become a teacher after my English and history degree, will the career service help me research and apply for a post masters of education? Yes, is the short answer. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have a lot of our students are interested in becoming teachers and um, either doing the PME for secondary school or the PME for primary school. So um, Eleanor is available, yes, to, to, to help students. She also, if you take those programmes, um, for example, in English and History, there's an employability module. And as part of that, um, personal statements and how to write them and how to apply for pathways, all of that is covered. So it's covered both in the classroom um, quite broadly and then more specifically then uh, with Eleanor in a one-to-one. -one. Also what's offered um, are some uh, workshops um, Strawberry Hill in London, uh, we have connections there. Um, so it's, it would be teaching in England. And um, we have uh, Clive Walger tends to come to Carlo quite often. And uh, if not in person, certainly online um, in terms of what's available for, um, for those teaching options in England, whether it be primary or secondary as well. So the answer is yes. Brilliant, thanks William. And Karen, I just have another question here. If I have already studied a course in Ireland and have done exams through English, do I still have to prove that I'm proficient in English? No, if you have university level or, or third level um, uh, qualifications, we're happy to accept that as um, we will just require proof it be a transcript or something like that. But yeah, no, third level um, um, standard is absolutely sufficient. 
Brilliant, thanks a million. And then just one last question, Anne-Marie, you might answer this one for me. Do you have to be getting Susie to apply for the Mature Student Grant, the scholarship? You mean the university grant that I mentioned? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, you know, I think it's on, you can get it on top of your grant. So it's, it means that I think um, the cutoff is your income. Um, there's a cutoff of up to 55,000. But again, it is a separate entity to ourselves. So they would you really need to check it out on the website. But as far as I know, you can get it on top. It's on top of your grant. Brilliant. Thanks a million. No problem. So now we've come to the end of the presentation. So just a big thank you to Karen Delaney from our admissions office. Uh, Anne-Marie Peters and Dr. Lisa Fortune from our student support services. And thank you very much for joining us this evening. If you do have any questions over the next few days or next few months, you can contact any members of the panel here this evening. You see our emails there on the screen. So you can contact myself or any member of the student recruitment team at slo at carlocollege.ie. We also have a CAO help desk on our website. So if you just log on to carlocollege.ie and head to the CAO help desk there, you can ask any questions or also through any of our social media platforms as well. Also, just one last thing to note that we are facilitating some small group tours. So if you do want to come to the college, get to see the campus, um, we are facilitating that and you can book those by emailing myself at slocarlocollege.ie or through the website as well. So thanks a million everyone for joining us and we hope to welcome you at Carlo College in September. <laughs>